All right, time for more Spy Fox and Hold the Mustard. Will we finish the game today? I don't know. Because I've never played it before. But based on the cutscenes we've gotten, it sounds like we're getting close to the end. Because we had the plot twist last time where Keen Calm Glomerate was actually like, I don't know, like a little rodent who was piloting like a robotic suit, which was really interesting. I think I prefer Keen Calm Glomerate. But it was at least a funny little cutscene. Anyhow, we're in Atlantis right now. Oh, yeah, um, okay. Oh, that's half water, half air. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Oh, yeah, during this stream, I can, I guess I can talk about my vacation. No, I will not, I will not be going to Disney World. I, I am, I'm kind of boycotting Disney until they get their act together. But I will be going to Universal Studios, which is actually a pretty great theme park as well. Generally not quite to the same, like, hype levels of Disney, but it's it's pretty close. And it's still really good. And also, I'm getting it for free, so... You can't beat those prices. Oh, that's a dead end, I'm pretty sure. Wait, that's not a dead end? Well, that sure looked like a dead end. Huh. <laughs> the bootleg Steamboat Willie uh, merchandise. I mean, that would be pretty funny. That's right, because Steamboat Willie alone, and only Steamboat Willie, is in the public domain now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait a second. Oh, there's two pipes that lead up. That's... Alright, I was a little confuzzled. Oh, shoot the guy. Shoot him, man! Bring out those massive weapons. We got this. Oh, you're going to Florida too? Very nice. Mostly we're going to Florida for slightly warmer weather and also to visit family. But there's still fun stuff there too. And also, uh, Chewy's. For those who don't know, Chewy's is a Tex-Mex chain. And, uh, it's really, really good. Way better than anything you can get in Michigan. <laughs> I'll need some fuel. Well, too bad, Spy Fox. We're just gonna have to suck it up and be a man. <laughs> I, I don't think that that advice really applies here. No, no, I think it does. <laughs> Dang it, Bobby, where's the extra propane then when you need it? Last out of the out of the sea, not the sky. <laughs> um, no promises, DX. <laughs> I will take photos, but I will probably... Any photos I post, I will not be in. I'm sure my... Si yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be me, my sister, my sister's fiancé, and I think my older brother, who is the one who has never actually appeared in any of my videos will be going to Universal. Maybe uh, my older brother's wife as well. Probably not, though. Actually, no, wait. He said he had five tickets. So somebody's going as well. Maybe my dad. I don't know. Well, I guess I'll figure it out when the day happens. Oh, maybe my nephew would... Maybe my nephew's going. That would be fun. There's one ride in Universal Islands of Adventure called Pterodon Flyers. It's like, I think the one ride my brother, who is like a big theme park geek, has not been on. Because there's a height limit. Not like you must be this tall to ride, but like a, you have to be this short to ride. Unless you're a parent accompanying someone who's short. And he's like, oh, all of us have been too tall to like go on it. But like with, with his son, he actually will be able to. I don't know. It's gonna be fun, though. But I'm get what I was trying to say <laughs> before I got sidetracked with who was going. Uh, I'm pretty sure my sister is gonna want to go on the Jimmy Fallon ride, not because she likes Jimmy Fallon, but because she's kind of obsessed with that ride for some reason. I've always said it's like Soren from Disney, but worse, and not just because the Jimmy Fallon's in it. Where? Okay, come on. Where's the pipe that leads down to the other enemies? I'm pretty sure you can't swim for this. 
No, that's that's solid. I'll need some fuel. Well, Spy Fox, I'm I'm doing my best. All right, buddy. I think you have to burn extra fuel when you're underwater, and there's no fuel upgrades. If I see any cats, I will take photos and post them just for you, DX. More likely, we'll get duck photos, which are my personal favorites. Ducks are my number one favorite animal. Especially when prepared a la orange. That was a joke. In all seriousness, I've never actually tried uh, eating duck before, but I am intrigued. I just want to make sure that when I try it, I get it at, like, a good restaurant so I get, like, a good version of it. Because I don't know if I actually like it or not. And I don't want to get duck at, like, a not great restaurant where it's not prepared properly and be like, I don't like duck. It's like, well, no, you just had a bad version of duck. <laughs> Quack, I found an extra spy mess just lying out. That doesn't make any sense, Spy Fox. I have to specifically uh, engineer every single one. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but I found one. If I could just find these lying out, what am I doing spending all my time and money creating them? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I mean, Metal Lord. It's like Race Through New York with Jimmy Fallon. That's the ride. And it's like, you sit in, like, seats, and, like... There, it's a screen-based attraction, so, like, it looks like you're moving, but you're not actually moving. It's, like, my least favorite kind of attraction. <laughs> it's also one of those attractions where it's like, oh, like, because there are 3D glasses that go along with it. That was ba It was made back when, like, 3D glasses were, like, a huge thing. And it's clear, like, so much of the stuff is just like, oh, wow, that was put in just to for the 3D glasses effect. Where it's like, oh, yeah, you're racing Jimmy Fallon for New York, and he's throwing pizzas at you, and they're coming out of the screen because 3D. It's like, ah. Oh. It's like, at least Muppet Vision 3D was, like, sh blatantly shameless in that. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I know I'm old because... It used to be when I went to Florida, I'm like, Disney, that's the best part of Florida by far. Now I'm like, eh, don't really like Disney, but I do like spending time with family. <laughs> and I'm like, is that, is that what it means to be old? Like, I'm, I'm also at the point where I'm like, I don't really like getting presents on Christmas, but I love giving them to other people. <laughs> I think that's how you know you're officially old. Or maybe, maybe matured is the right word. It doesn't help that most of my... The stuff I ask for for my birthday and Christmas now is boring stuff. My kitchen utensils. Good night, Eddie. Thanks for joining in. Have a wonderful night. Oh, no. We're almost out of health. No! Oh, come on, man! If there's a 3D attraction... Oh, oh, no, no, no. Little uh, Toon Cat, there are, way there are many 3D attractions. Basically, every theme park you go to in Florida is going to have, like, 3D attractions. Except except maybe, like, Gatorland. I think Gatorland is more about, like, Hey, crikey, do you want to pet an alligator? <laughs> now you can. <laughs> Florida's well known for its tourism, so... You get you get crazy things. <laughs> you also get a mini golf course on like every block. <laughs> there's some good mini golf courses in Florida, though. and there are some really bad ones. Looking at you, Jungle Golf. <laughs> on the on the uh, strip located near Disney World, there's like a whole bunch of like touristy stuff. There's a really really bad golf course called. Uh, it's, it's full name is Wild Jungle Golf, but we always shorten it to Jungle Golf. And, like, it's cheap, and, like, you can play, like, there are two courses on it, so you can play, like, 36 holes for, like, way less than, like, a lot of the other, like, more premier mini golf courses. But, man, do the holes blow. There's, like, almost no theming, and, like, they do not take very good care of, like, the fake grass there. So it's like, oh, yeah, all of the, the holes that you have to put the golfs in, like, there's metal rims on the outside that will literally make the ball bounce away from, like, the hole if you fucking shoot it into it. It's really bad. <laughs> 
No, no, no. I embrace the Florida man and alligator aspect. Ooh, we're back in the passway. So we're hopefully heading back towards the pyramid? Wait, why did we take a... Why did we go in the pyramid, then escape from the pyramid to Atlantis, just so we could escape back to the pyramid again? I've got to say, the plot to this movie is confusing. Spy Fox, are you watching movies in the spy mess instead of actually completing the missions? I can multitask. That's what you... I would believe you if you didn't go through 18 spy men. Look at that, you just crashed through the wall. Sorry, it was the exciting part of the movie. <laughs> Goku was about to go Super Saiyan level 18. Spy Fox, have you ever even seen Naruto before? Well, that shows you how much anime I watch. Ouch! <laughs> Spy Fox, we, on we don't have any more backup spy messes. You better not mess this one up, Spy Fox. Oh, that's a funny dude, Spy Fox. I'm serious. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <gasps> spy Fox, I told you to be careful, and you immediately crashed into 18 enemies, and you almost hit the wall. <laughs> I'm sorry, they all mobbed me, and I can't shoot fast enough when their targets are too tiny. Sometimes it just doesn't register. Well, that's true. And, like, the older you get, the more you value family time. Especially because you come to the realization your family's not always going to be around. It's sad to think about, but it's true! <laughs> <laughs> it was like I was playing Bear Storm for a moment there. Oh, that was bitch. Hey, thanks for joining in, DX, and have a wonderful night. Spy Fox? Are you lost in the catacombs again? I don't know what you mean by again. Well, th this was already a world in the game, and we I thought we beat it, but then you're back here again. Look, I just fly where the game tells me to. I couldn't help but notice you're on two health left, Spy Fox. You know what, Quack? Let me worry about the health, and you just worry on building a backup in case I might need it. <laughs> By the way, Quack, Quack, have you ever seen Crazy Rich Asians? Spy Fox, stop watching those movies! <laughs> Eyes on the road, please. <laughs> Alright, I got a health refill. Should be ready now. Meantime, I'm gonna watch The Lion King. At least you picked a good movie. Oops, did I say The Lion? I meant Lion King one and a half. <laughs> it's even better. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> I'm glad the invincibility lasted long enough to kill, like, one group of enemies. <laughs> No, I didn't want it for any more than that. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no, you, you, there's there's one anime that Spy Fox would obviously watch. Spy Family. Or Spy X Family, or however you pronounce it. I don't know what it's about. I just know it has the word spy in the title. And obviously, I'm instantly hooked. Also, it has that weird pink-haired girl who makes the funny meme faces. <laughs> Uh-oh, we got to the end. <laughs> Based, you love Lion King 1 and the half. You know what? As far as direct-to-DVD Disney sequels go, Lion King 1 and the half is really not that bad. It's no extremely goofy movie, but... Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Like when it comes, like when it comes to bad Disney, there's no shortage of them. Like, have, have any of you ever seen Beauty and the Beast: Bell's Magical World? It's like unwatchably bad. <laughs> it's so awful. <laughs> oh my no, my no, no! There was like 18 ships all clustered on top of that one ship. That was close. Yikes. Gotta aim better with the clicks. <laughs> or Quack will have my goose cooked. 
Okay, you know what? We all we all mocked the bad direct-to-DVD Disney sequels. I would take a bad animated direct-to-DVD Disney sequel over a bad live-action Disney remake any day. Like, I alone for the days where we had <laughs> at least semi-original content. I say semi-original because, let's be real, some of them were just the first movie, but again, like uh, Jungle Book 2 or, uh, oh man, I shot the power-up. There were some other really blatantly, like, Aladdin Free was the goat. Aladdin Free was also one of the better Disney sequels as well. Excuse me? There is no way he could have squeezed through! I was aiming right in that direction, mass blasting in there. <laughs> Unless there was like 18 ships on top of each other. <laughs> it's okay, Spy Fox. Def's a slap on the wrist. It doesn't even reset your high score. <laughs> Look, what's even the point of a life system if it doesn't reset your high score? <laughs> Yeah, like, look, there must have been, like, 12 ships right there. Bruh, how? <laughs> I do remember in, uh, Aladdin 3, King of Thieves, like, the whole premise was basically started with, like, Aladdin, like, I don't know if I can marry Jasmine, like, I've been a street rat my whole life, it's all I know, how can I be the Sultan? It's like, bro, I thought we went over this in the first movie. <laughs> also, I thought Aladdin and Jasmine got married at the end of the first movie. I thought that was implied by their magic carpet ride in, like, kind of blatant wedding clothes, but uh, I guess, I guess not. <laughs> at least they got Robin Williams back. <laughs> Sorry, Quack, I was reminiscing about all the good Disney sequels, and all the bad ones. Oh, also, if anybody's seen it, can anybody in chat confirm if Cinderella 3 is actually good? Because I have heard people be like, no, I've heard some people be like, Cinderella 3 is so really, is like extremely bad. I've heard people be like, Cinderella 3 is actually a pretty good sequel, and I've heard people be like, dude, Cinderella 3 is even better than the first Cinderella. Like, it's so good. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, it seems really over the top, but like, I guess, <laughs> I've heard it but at least raises the stakes compared to the first movie. It was pretty good. <laughs> alright, alright. You didn't know there was a two? Yeah, no, okay. So, from what I've heard, so there's Cinderella. We all know the Cinderella story. Uh, there's Cinderella 2, which, as far as I can tell, is like... Oh, guess what? One of the evil stepsisters actually isn't evil. She's just misunderstood. And she gets a boyfriend. And also the mice get, like, boyfriend and girlfriend. And it's, like, really, really, really boring. And then I've heard Cinderella Free is, like, the, the evil stepmother finds the fairy godmother's magic wand and, like, uses it to reverse time so that her stepdaughters get with the prince instead of Cinderella. <laughs> it's, it's, a uh, it's, a. Uh... It's an interesting idea. I I admire the creativity on that one more than, say, Little Mermaid 2, where it's like, remember how Ariel wanted to be above the water? Well, what if her daughter wanted to be below water? It's like, this is literally just the same movie. You just reverse the premise, and it's not clever. It's like, oh, no, it's pretty clever. <laughs> oh, also, the villain is literally just Ursula, but worse. Not in terms of morality, just in terms of entertainment value. Yeah. <laughs> also, Lilo and Stitch had, I think, three sequels. Two of them were the first and last episodes of the TV show, but, like, still. Enough's enough, man. Like, I know people really, really like Lilo and Stitch. I thought it was a fine movie. Definitely one of the better ones from the 2010, or from the 2000s, but it wasn't, like, amazing. At least, in my opinion. <laughs> Although, like, a couple years back, I think back, I think it was back when Disney Plus first started, and, like, there was a lot of Disney content. I'm like, oh, I haven't seen this in years. Like, I watched Stitch the movie again, which is what the, it was the first of the sequels that was literally the pilot for the TV show, and I'm like, okay. It was an hour long. If it was any more than an hour, I it would have been bad. But because it was literally like 60 minutes, I'm like, it thoroughly entertained me start to finish. <laughs> Good job, Stitch the movie. It 
did exactly what it needed to. Alba. Yikes. Oh yeah, that was the other one. That was the one that wasn't connected to the TV show at all. I also remember they did, in, in Stitch has a glitch, they did the blatant, like, Oh no, Stitch died in the movie! That's like, no, he actually didn't. It was a fake death. But, like, it was even more blatant than the other ones. Because, like, when Disney does the fake-out death, there's usually an explanation as to why it's not a real death. Not in that one! That one, it's like, Stitch should have died, but he's back, and they're like, Wait, how is that possible? It's, like, it's not! <laughs> Credits roll. <laughs> Just like, bro, you couldn't even think of an explanation. <laughs> Ex exactly. Oh no, this is invincible. Exactly. They were often made to promote TV shows and not to actually like tell a new good story with the same world or characters that the first movie had. Although you know, you know what's not on on uh, Disney Plus that absolutely should be House of Mouse. That show was goaded. <laughs> Maybe it's hard to get all the rights to all the characters back, but well, no, they own pretty much all the characters. I don't think I don't think they even like put in like Tarzan characters or anything. <laughs> it's like it's like the Stitch movies have two different canon timelines. There's the TV show timeline and then the movie timeline, or the TV show timeline and the non-TV show timeline. It, it was it was very confusing. Also, okay. What? How? I was blasting him constantly. I know. Okay, I know it's not a good movie either. Like, it's definitely not a good movie. But a movie that I was entertained by pretty thoroughly was Kronk's New Groove. And, like, looking back, it was not good. Like, it's a pretty bad movie. But it's at least amusing. <laughs> I just gotta get the thumbs up from Poppy. But, like, the whole movie is Kronk's story of, like, he wants to, like, get the thumbs up from his dad who approves of his lifestyle. <laughs> But it had, it had some genuinely good moments. Oh yeah, I remember that. Because, you know, there was one kid who crawled into a washing machine and died a tragic death, and they're like, we can't ever depict a child going into a washing machine again. It's like, okay, they didn't, like, lock her in. Well, okay, Nani trapped her in there in order to, like, confront her on some serious stuff. Sure. She wasn't, like, locking her in the washing machine, turning it on. That's, like, murder. <laughs> So, yeah. You want you want to fund a new Shrek movie with Steamboat Willie as a punchy pet character in it? Yeah, cause we need Shrek Five, cause cause the previous two were so good. <laughs> My impression. So I've only seen Shrek One and Two. Both of those movies were were pretty good. Shrek Free, I've heard like everyone was just like, no, it's really bad. Shrek Four is extremely polarizing. With half the people being like, yep, it's just as bad as Free, and half the being like, no, it's actually. Great. So, like, my brother saw... My brother used to work for, like, a, a lake where they would put on... Like, a public lake in, like, the town. And they would have, like, like Friday movie nights. So he would be paid to, like, you know, like, stand watch, make sure nothing, like, went down, and, like, I think sell refreshments. He's like, I got paid to watch Shrek 4, and I still felt ripped off. <laughs> Then again, he's not the biggest fan of the first two movies, so take that with a grain of salt. How could one not love the first two Shrek movies? Maybe oversaturation. Those movies were quoted a lot in the 2000s. Also, uh, one of his close friends was, like, obsessed with the movie and probably quoted it too much. <laughs> oh, that's dead end. Ouch. Spy Fox, are you holding your podcast where you talk about weird animated movies while... 
Spy Fox, did you crash the last of the spy machine while you were listening to me talk? You distracted me! I was watching Shrek the Fourth. <laughs> That's not even the name of the movie, Spy Fox. Man, how long is this passageway? You go in, you go out. Like, come, come on. Blast him out of the sky. Spy Fox is just not watching where he's going. Ouch. Yeah, Shrek is a, it's a pretty different style of movie compared to your typical Disney Renaissance film. And I think that's part of the reason why it was so successful. It's like, I, I love the Disney Renaissance films. Most of them. They're really good. But they all kind of have a distinctive theme to them. More like style. You kind of knew what you were getting. Unless you watched Hunchback. In which case you're like, what the heck? Disney made this? <laughs> but hey, that era had some of the most goaded movies. Here we go. This is the secret passageway I was looking for. Oh. There we go. It is kind of amazing that, like, a lot of the Disney... Or how, like, literally one of Disney's most prominent, like, animators left... <laughs> no, no, no. Literally two of the most prominent animators, like, in Disney left and started their own rival animation companies. <laughs> I think I went the wrong way at the start. I've been told there are 100 levels in this game. Having said that, because they don't tell you what overall level you're on, just what level in the given world you're on, I don't know what level overall in the game this is. This could be level 80, it could be level 60, I don't really know. Oh my god, no, no, no. Pretty sure there's a lot more levels after you get out of the passage. Oh, I thought we might be finishing it today. <laughs> Possibly not. Gotta learn to... Gotta know when to back away a little bit. Thank goodness the enemies don't shoot at you as well. That would make things a lot more difficult. <laughs> oh, I'm in the middle of the... Okay. Just based on the cutscenes, it sounded like we were about to foil King Conglomerate's ultimate plans. Perhaps that was wrong. <laughs> Mission complete! Man, this is a long world! Never mind. Fox? You've arrived on the Yucatan Peninsula in Central America. There seems to be another transmitter robot here, like the one you put out of commission in Cairo. It's ah. controlling more tomato-snatching robots. Looks like I'll be doing a little sightseeing then, Monkey Penny. Okay. There we go. The Yucatan Peninsula. Wow. That's a mouthful. All right. Well, I guess now that's a great spot as any to uh, end the stream. That actually kind of worked out perfectly. We're right around at the hour and a half mark. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Top search result for a full walkthrough on YouTube. It's close to five hours long. All right, all right, all right. That's that's fair. That's cool. That means we get to continue playing this uh, in February when I get back from vacation. <laughs> and it gives me more time to think of something else to inevitably play when we uh, finish this game. But we're still playing back here baseball. All right. Yeah, I'm going to sign off there. Thanks for watching, everybody. It was great chatting with you all, as always. Uh, this will be the last stream that I have until I get back from vacation, so I'll keep you guys posted on that. And I, I believe YouTube uploads will stop after Friday of this week, too, until I get back. So, anyways, thanks for chatting, everybody. I wish you all a fantastic rest of your night, and God bless, everyone.